Swiggity, swoggity, coming for that booty. The booty of emotional support. Oh, yes, indeed. Good evening. Ladies, lasses and lasses, welcome to the click and welcome to r slash facepalm. Did you know that the emotional support demon is still on sale for still a very limited time? Oh, my God. At the time of this recording, we are just about to hit 10,000 plushies. 10,000. Oh, my God. I'm going to take over this world. You know you're doing well when there are going to be more plushies than humans. Eventually, my ambitions for the world are just <laughs> fluffy and wholesome. Enjoy. Mwah. And don't think I forgot about you, Penelope. <laughs> Welcome to the video, Penelope. Are you going to watch this video smelling nice, Penelope? I hope you do. Enjoy. Imagine how good your life would be if you had a 26-year-old nursing assistant by your side. Now replace S with N. Wait, S with N. Nerning anintant. <laughs> Am I missing something? What on earth is this supposed to mean? It just sounds like I'm having a stroke. I definitely need, like, a nursing assistant if that is the case. Maybe this is the selling point. <laughs> Dear God. The guy who named his kid XXC is making fun of pronouns. <laughs> Ah, Twitter discourse. You know, my mental health has never been better than when I deleted Twitter from my phone. Oh my god, there's so many people arguing for just nothing. It is amazing how many people go on Twitter just for conflict. Follow my Twitter, by the way. It's basically fun memes, emotional support demon pictures, and me whining about YouTube. <laughs> nice. Oh yes, indeed, the biz is going nicely. I'm not so sure about that shotgun on top of your foot. That looks like a disaster waiting to happen. But look at that. Oh my god. Wait, wait a second. Uh, zoom in on that pile of cash he's holding in his left hand. That's just cash on one side. They printed these ones with, like, regular paper, but didn't even do it on two sides. Oh, no. <laughs> if you want to do a photo shoot for, like, a music album or something, make sure stuff like this doesn't slip through. It is kind of funny, though. It's a really funny Easter egg. Maybe it's on purpose. I hope it's on purpose. My friend's little brother, nonverbal, used to hide people's shoes if he liked the person because it meant they had to stay longer. The more difficult it was to find your shoes, the more he liked you. That is so freaking... Oh, that's so cute! One day, my cousin came over and she was a bish. When it was time to leave, my friend's brother handed her shoes directly to her and she went on and on about how he must have a crush on her because he only helped her. <laughs> Oh, you sweet summer child. That is so cute, though. I mean, a little bit annoying if you're, like, in a rush, but it's, like, the gesture is adorable. Oh, my God. All right, we're just coming in with a little plane here for a landing. Oh, that is so douchey. That can't be legal. So they're using, like, a super strong laser pointer to interrupt the pilots of an airplane? What kind of caveman ooga booga prank is this? What the frick? Hey, Kyle, you know what cool idea I have for our evening beer party? Let's try to make a plane crash. <laughs> we are really quirky boys. Musky Husky, in a few months, we will be removing all legacy blue checks. The way in which they were given out was corrupt and nonsensical. I mean, <laughs> Twitter's just like a bonfire. And if you just take a step back, it's quite enjoyable, you know? A bonfire isn't nice if you're insisting on standing in the middle of it. But if you take a step back and bring out marshmallows, it's kind of nice. That's the way I see Twitter right now. It's just like, yeah, why not? Why not? <laughs> I must say, though, the way Twitter is currently exploding is amazing for the meme economy. Thank you very much. Isn't she literally African, though? <laughs> Morocco is not Africa. <laughs> Crying. It is an Arab country. That girl is at most a white Arabic person. Y'all can't be serious. I know something that starts with G and ends with Oogle. Morocco, Wikipedia. Morocco, officially the Kingdom of Morocco, is the westernmost country in the Maghreb region of North Africa. Well, there we go, baby. How easy it is to not look like a fool online. I think they need a little bit of an emotional support team after this. <laughs> nice plug, Click. Oh, thank you, Click. Mm. My toddler was about to hit her head on a bar at the playground, so I told her to duck, and she quacked at me. <laughs> <laughs> then hit her head. <laughs> she has her priorities straight. I just see it in front of me and it's beautiful. La 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 la. Oh, child. Duck. Quack. <laughs> that is amazing. <laughs> you know, uh, parenting ain't all bad. Funny story. My first word as a baby was very early and very premature. And it was duck. But in Swedish, of course. Anka. That was my first word. Super early and everything. 
I think maybe there is some kind of spiraling with me and ducks. You know, it started off pretty chill, but nowadays it's it's an issue. Do not dare try to help me. Thank you. Coexist. That's pretty cute, actually. That's pretty adorable. Uh, out of respect for the Christian community, I request that the cross be left out of this sticker slash message, as our belief does not support that our cross is being mis mi mistreated in this. Thank you for understanding. With love, the Christian community... Jesus loves you. I guess it's supposed to say Jesus. I don't know what that J is. Jesus loves you. That is... <laughs> <laughs> Freaking ironic. It's a wholesome sticker about everyone should love everyone equally. Literally, love thy neighbor. That's what this sticker means. And you're like, I don't approve of this message as a real Christian. <laughs> you know that someone has really gone down the rabbit hole of like personal bias and like hatred when they just make up stuff? Like, oh, this religion that I happen to be a part of hates the exact same things I do. What the happy coincidence. Or maybe just projecting your own BS on something. How about that, Karen? You weren't expecting this, were you? Elon Musk left withering by heavy boos at Dave Chappelle comedy show. I actually felt bad for him, one crowd member wrote. Oh my god, this tweeted from an account that no longer exists? Wait, what? The account got nuked that talked about this? What? Oh my god, I didn't, I didn't know what the facepalm in this was originally, apart from just, you know, a botched comedy show or whatever, but... But that is... Oh no. Oh, that is... Oh. Oh no. Hey. else? Put that label on there. That doesn't mean we need it. Why would no. you buy that, that much cheese? That is amazing. <laughs> I was trying to FaceTime you and you wouldn't answer the phone. So I made an executive decision. Exactly. It's important. <laughs> I, cheese. I didn't do anything wrong. I saw something labeled at a price and I bought. And how much did you pay for that? Uh, approximately $10.44. And what? how many pounds of cheese? Is Probably that? like twenty, <laughs> maybe more. <laughs> That's what amazing. What are going to do? No clue. <laughs> About twenty pounds of parmesan. Parmesan? <laughs> <laughs> you are really proud of yourself, aren't you? Forty-four pounds Four of cheese. Holy sh! <laughs> This is amazing! I'm assuming what happened is that it's supposed to be like $10 per pound, right? And they accidentally put $10 for the whole thing. And he just bought it, it's like, oh, what a sale, what a deal. I was gonna say, get that cheddar, but I think in this case it's more like, get that parmesan. <laughs> yes, indeed. If there's one thing I have learned in my 30 years on this earth, is that you can never have enough cheese. Wisdom of the day can thank me later. As we stay the night in one of the World Cup fan camps in Qatar. Okay, one of the World so Cup one fan of camps. One is 175 pounds per night. Um, it took us a while That's kind of pricey. That's it. really pricey. This is us getting shown to our tent. Like that's, that's what Here we would tell, pay Welcome for a decent hotel, like. So it's pretty basic, oh. two single beds. Um, and the ground felt a bit bumpy, so I had a little inspection and yep, that is sad. I mean, you know, for a festival a standard, standard, sure, but. And we had two padlocks to lock our tent. So this is us checking out the facilities. This is the toilet. Unfortunately, this area didn't have any toilet paper, um, so we had to go searching for that. Oh, okay, that's a bit I would odd. maybe advise letting the water run for a bit before you brush your teeth. Ah, that's brown. Oh, well, that nice explains uh, no toilet Night paper, Esther. so that makes sense, I suppose. Now, we woke up the next morning, and the first thing that hit us was the heat. It was pretty hot in there. Yeah, 30 degrees in a tent a with no AC is going to be kind of sweaty. Like pushing hot air around. We got a breakfast box in the morning with a small bottle of water and an instant coffee, but there was nowhere to fill up with hot water. Oh, just take the brown water from the from the sink. But unfortunately, I they'll give some to aroma to it. And there was none at reception. We had a bit more of a walk around, and it still felt slightly unfinished, considering there was two days before the World Cup. The staff assured us it would all be open in time. Enjoy the little things. Yeah, like the minuscule bottle of water in a third degree tent. Nice! I'm just gonna be honest, this does not feel like a, like a $200 <laughs> per night kind of experience. I mean, if you went camping, sure, you know, but, but that's not what this is. My daughter was graded 7 out of 10 and a 14 out of 10 in her homework just to color some objects last week. And two weeks ago, I wrote her correspondence book that 14 out of 10 was an error. School replied, Tara's mom, those were dates we do not grade toddlers. I am embarrassed for myself. 
<laughs> oh, no. Honestly, I might assume the same thing. It's like out of 10, you would assume it's like, you know, oh, you colored seven things correctly. You know, it's a silly, it's not a great grade, but it's, you know, something. Oh. Looking forward to the next uh, parent meeting. Oh, dear. I'm, that's not what I'm trying to say. Like, what I'm trying... It just don't make sense. Like, you go straight up, and then you're in space. And then there's planets. It, oh, no, is this... I don't understand what you mean by, like, light years and what you mean by... I just told you it would take almost 300 days to get to Mars. I know, Okay, God, so I mean, if it would take 300 days to get to Mars, it's going to take several years to get any planets past that. Yeah, yeah, with We've our current propulsion, yeah. There's probably not much life form in this solar system. So you have to go not 300 days to Mars, but completely outside of the solar system. It's, it's right there. It's not right there. <laughs> but it is. Like, <laughs> the moon is 200,000 miles away. You see it because it's giant and it's illuminated. Wait a second, is this a live broadcast of the birth of a flat earther that we are currently witnessing? Is that what this... Oh, no. I mean, some of these concepts can be surprising. I think one thing that is so tricky to comprehend is just the vast amount of emptiness versus matter. The best way to get a comprehension of it is download one of those space simulators. They're very simple, free ones you can find online. And you can, like, fly, fly around with a free cam in the universe, so to say. It's very cool, and it gives you an idea of the sheer scale of things. It's absolutely bonkers. And I suppose concepts like light years and stuff like that can be confusing. I'm surprised it's confusing to someone of this age, but but still, if you weren't exposed to it, I suppose. But light years is essentially just how long does light travel if you let it travel for a year? So you basically take speed, which is meters per second, and just multiply that per seconds, and you know what you get left is just meters, so it becomes a distance. That's how the physical dimension of these kind of calculations work. So uh, there you go. It's a distance, and that's the basics of it. But yeah, if you haven't done that, download one of those simulator things. They're really cool. Um, I used to play around with those a lot, like 10 years ago. They're, they're pretty badass. Attention all team members. Our call-offs are occurring at a staggering rate. From now on, if you call off, you might as well go out and look for another job. We are no longer tolerating any excuse for calling off. If you're sick, you need to come prove it to us. Like, sneeze you in the face? Nice. If your dog died, you need to bring him in and prove it to us? What? You want me to drag the carcass of my dead pet into the office? What about if a family member dies? You want me to bring that carcass too? Are you- Oh, dear God! Are you serious about this? If you only want morning shifts, too bad, work at a bank. If anyone from here on calls out more than once in the next 30 days, you will not have a job. Do you know if my 11.5 years at Darden, how many days off I called off? Zero, I came in sick. That is horrible. You're just getting your co-worker sick, which will probably lead to even less productivity over time. You know? Because people get sick. I came in sick. I got in a wreck literally on my way to work one time. Airbags went off. My car was total. But you know what? I made it to work on time. There are no more excuses. Us, collectively, as a management team, have had enough. If you don't want to work here, don't. It's as simple as that. If you're here and want to work, then work. No more complaining about not being cut out or being able to leave early. You're in the restaurant business. Do you think I want to be here until midnight on Friday or Saturday? No. I would much rather be at home with my husband and dog. Going to the movies or seeing family, but I don't. I'm dead. Dedicated to being here, as should you! No more excuses or complaints! I hope you continue to work here, and I think we, management, make it as easy as we can on y'all. Thank you for your time, and thank you for those who came in every day and work hard. I wish there were more like you. I see one out of two things happening in the near future. Either everyone quits, and you're no longer in a position where you can make demands, so you're gonna have to beg people to come to work so the whole thing doesn't collapse. Or number two, you're, a bunch of people are just gonna drag dead pets into work. You know, th these are the <laughs> two conclusions <laughs> that you're encouraging. Yay, management. 18-year-olds are not mature enough to make decisions about the future of a nation. <laughs> Raise the voting age. I mean, I can agree to a certain point that, you know, at 18, you definitely have not reached the pinnacle of maturity. But on the other hand, I also know the undertone of this is because they didn't like the way certain things went. So they're blaming it on that immature youth and they don't know how to vote. So, uh, you know, I can I can sort of agree with uh, maturity aspects, but I don't, I don't think this is the, this is not it, fam. This is not it. Independent. Texas mother lost her home and job and was threatened with jail after asking eight-year-old son to walk home alone. Isn't that super normal? I mean, I used to do that back when I was in elementary school, at least. <laughs> Unless it's like, you know, a snowstorm and the school is 10 miles away, but I don't think that's the case. 
Most of this was caused by bad lawmaking. The CPS case was dropped under Texas reasonable childhood independence law, but that law only amended civil law, not criminal law. So while some one-sided law said what she did was legal and even actively encouraged, the other viewed it as a crime. <laughs> Weirdly, I think the entire endangerment case came from this one exchange. As they stood on her porch, the officer told Wallace that her son could have been kidnapped and naughtily trafficked. You don't see much naughty traffic where you are, but where I patrol in downtown Waco, we do, said one of the cops, according to Wallace. The statement struck her as odd. They were basically admitting that this is a safe neighborhood, she said. <laughs> The officer then asked Wallace whether she would let her son walk home again. And now that she knew about the naughty trafficking, so, okay, something bad happens somewhere else in the world and therefore you have to go to jail for your kid walking home 500 meters from school. What? Qatari police confiscated the Brazilian flag thinking it was form of LGBTQ support. This is so, this is so many levels of just, of just no. Of, of just nope. No. But also no. I remember when I was doing Hunger Games. Nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie, Jennifer Lawrence says. We were told girls and boys can both identify with a male something something. Okay, well... <laughs> good <laughs> that we have characters of all of all kind of stuff, you know? But but also... Also no. I don't think... I don't think that's the case though, is it? <laughs> There are 89 registered voters at Blorp Norman, the homeless shelter. That is 89 voters cast for liberals that they didn't earn. Now multiply this by 100 million nationally and you will see how liberals are stealing the elections. Wait, you're saying there are 8.9 billion homeless people in the US? Damn, inflation really be doing numbers, isn't it? Yeesh. Tersfeldt Football Club in Winterthur, Switzerland, commissioned artist Marine and Stephanie Keggy to paint their clubhouse the new Tolgott cloakroom. This is the finished product that cost 28,000 euros. That, uh... The... <laughs> the <laughs> uh... I think if it was a more consistent urban street art kind of vibe, it could have been really cool. But this is just kind of messy and the contrast between the colors and any kind of symmetry and stuff or consistency is just... I don't know, it just makes it more tedious to look at. Swipe with strip facing card holder. You are the card holder. You know, I, I'm kind of embarrassed that I would have been one of the people that this would have been set up for. Because when I hear card holder, my mind is just like, oh, it's the thing the card goes in. You know, that's the that's the thing holding the card. Because my brain is just like that. I feel I feel very personally attacked by this, and I'm gonna move on to the next meme. Have my See, Louisiana priest, 37, is arrested for recording himself having a threesome with two dominatrixes on church altar. <laughs> it's a different kind of religious sacrifice. Oh yeah, just get on the altar, we'll do it in the Lord's name. You usually say that shouting the God's name in vain is a sin or something like that. But if this does not seem like it is in vain, right? It's not in vain, it's for a very good reason. Uh, go boy. <laughs> Martin, 32, <laughs> about me. I can do way more for you than you can ever do for me. Humble yourself entirely. Pretty much hopeless at this point. The internet has brainwashed you. Oh, wait, he's saying the internet has brainwashed you, but at the same time saying that you can't provide anything that way around. Let's see what, what this get, gets into. I am intrigued. I am single because I didn't fall apart in my 20s. And now I am stuck to pick from leftovers. America has failed its men. We deserve better than obese W words and delusional single mothers. So now the entire world sees that a female brain falls apart if not being led by a man. Y'all have no awareness or self-control. Children. This is a weird thing to put on your Tinder profile that's supposed to be like, haha, look at me, I am fun and you want me in your life. Incel terminology is <laughs> probably not a selling points while also projecting that and being like you were brainwashed by the internet <laughs> there are like so many levels of like oh dear god no in this <laughs> not gonna lie corporations being forced to come on here and publicly say shite like we apologize for the impersonator account that tweeted that everyone deserves food clean water and shelter that is absolutely not what we stand for it's pretty funny <laughs> When you get trolled to try to be a better person, but you really don't want to. I'm so sorry I was hacked. I, I didn't say these good things. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs> All right, guys, please. School wins legal battle to electric shock children to correct behavior. This just gives me, like, one of those really weird movies when they have, like, electric collars and stuff. The judge for children with disabilities can continue to use electric shocks for students. All right, great. Yeah, that's... <sighs> Wow, wow, is this, I didn't know we went back to the 1950s. Yuck. 
For four years, I have received insane notes and threats from Trumpers who believe I work for the New York Times. I don't, I never have, but in various bios it says New York Times best-selling author, and they cannot tell the difference. How pathetic is that? They're just sending threats to random authors who just happen to be featured in a newspaper because they, they don't like the newspaper and they can't tell that they'll actually work there. Oh no. I mean, I suppose it's about on the level of understanding I would expect from, like, Twitter trolls that send people threats, to be honest. What is your favorite character in Lord of the Rings, and why is it Gollum? <laughs> How tall are you, dude? Oh, well, I'm 6'3", 191. And you? <laughs> that's like the perfect height for a guy. <laughs> I am 5'1", and petite, upside down, smiley. Whoops, that's too much height difference, I guess. I don't think this would work out. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you're rejecting me because of my height? The audacity! Well, we all have our preferences. Even your profile bio says only six feet and above. <laughs> okay, incel. If you have a small pee, but you say that lamal. The frick? How is that different from you having a height requirement? I am a woman, so it is not the same, incel. <laughs> Even if a man has nothing, he has the audacity to ask stupid questions like this. <laughs> Bye! I do love that there are like three plot twists of hypocrisy in this short conversation alone. And then also going on like incel rants and just body shaming and all that kind of great, great, great girl. Yeah, great. <laughs> Keep it classy, queen. Yeah, slay. <laughs> and stay single, please. Trigger warning, black POC, dark skin. So cute. Oh my God. Uh, thanks for the trigger warning. No problem. As a person with n wordophobia, fear of black people and you censored black but you didn't censor black in the in the first line of the tweet so that's that's consistent and good uh, i thought about using a trigger warning it was a great idea i just realized that there is a bubble of twitter hopefully a very small bubble that <laughs> literally thinks trigger warning race is like a good thing because it's a trigger warning and it's helping people and not just like really racist <laughs> Okay, click. Take a deep breath. These people are not real. It's aliens in human skin trying to trigger human social standards and seeing what we do. It's all a conspiracy. That makes me sleep so much better at night. Let's break the stigma around rats. They are just cuties who want to enjoy life same as us. Look at that little chunky monster. <laughs> White people really love and respect every single thing on this earth except black people. Incredible. Damn, I've heard of like shoehorning things into conversations before, but this is... <laughs> It's about the little fluffy rat. Oh, oh. Bratty. <laughs> How much to keep a whammon monthly? Hair, 450. Nails, 350. Lashes, waxes, 350. Not currency specified. It could be a little bit whatever. Makeup, and 250. Clothes, 500. Groceries, 500. Eating out, 500. How much do you eat? Oh, no. Okay, it's monthly. Okay, I thought it was weekly first. All right, well, still kind of a lot, though. It's one person, fam. Gym membership, 200. Car, 500. Vacation fund, 350. Phone bill, 200. That's also a really pricey phone bill. What? Medical insurance, 400. Going out, 750. Total, 5,300 monthly budget. And uh, I'm assuming you're not contributing that budget yourself, because uh, that, that would be a bit uh, too grown up, I guess. Ugh, them silly whammons, time to get a man. Well, hello there, Topicky Wapicky. How are you doing tonight? This is that kind of person that just like... What I give to the relationship is just like being me and like the, the absolute positivity and vibes I radiate for th 5,000 a month. <laughs> Uh, good luck with that. Stay single, please. Canada just turned 18 and is looking for a $160,000 salary. That's not even the crazy part. Is this the most Gen Z cover letter ever? It almost seems like satire or trolling. Job posting was for a marketing assistant. 160k at 18 is, uh... That's pretty good. Let's see, let's get into this one. Disabilities plus accommodation requested. Depression, anxiety, undiagnosed borderline personality disorder. What I ask for of my employer is for me to not be on video. Ideally, there'd be no calling, but I understand if that accommodation cannot be made. This reads like a troll, <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Okay, let's keep going. Cover letter. My birth name is Blorp. My stage name is Blorp, which should only be used for acting and modeling opportunities. Wait a second, so, so you dislike being on camera, heavily, but you're a model and actor? <laughs> uh, what? My ideal salary is 13,270 monthly. I think when I was an engineer with a master's degree, I made about 4k. Yeah. 
English US is my native language. I was born female on the year of 2004. I am gender fluid, which is defined as denoting or relating to a person does not identify as a fixed gender. My pronouns are she, her, which means you can refer to me as either she, he, or both. I'm also a member of the bi-romantic community ethnicity is English, uh, which means I am white. This reads like a troll post where someone tries to sound like a, like a chronically online Twitter person. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> I love cartoons, sitcoms, and any family-friendly show or movie made for ages 13 and up. It's a childhood dream of mine to be hired for a creative job whenever related to fashion, entertainment, writing, editing. But but this has nothing to do with experience. You just said that I love cartoons, and now I want to be a writer. It's like, okay, that can be an inspiration point, but there's nothing here that says that you would actually be good at anything. I prefer to keep my intimate life to myself and not for hire. This means I don't want any job opportunity that's made include me to produce sensual slash intimate content. But it was- wait, wait, but this was for a- hold on, hold on, this was for a marketing assistant position. I don't- uh, what? I own an online e-commerce store through a website I made in Shopify. You can view it here. I have previously used blah blah blah. And my personality type is infipet, which means I love to help others, aim for perfection, and work passionately. Okay. Alright, I think this is a troll post, uh, but I think it's worth talking about, because I have seen stuff like this- floating around as well. And on this channel, we often make fun of crappy managers and that kind of stuff because it's funny and it's very relatable and it's kind of an issue. Uh, whenever you have a job opening, I have done this in the past myself, uh, you do get applications that I think are well intended, but they do miss the mark. Um, a lot of these things in this letter are perfectly reasonable things, but it's not something an employer would necessarily be interested in. And like I said, I think this is just satire because it goes really overboard. It's literally asking to be in the 1% as an 18 year old and then going <laughs> into all this kind of weird side rants. And also, of course, worth mentioning, it's very important to like figure out your identity and what you're comfortable with and who you are. But that's like you on a personal level, I suppose. And it's very important that that is respected and you don't have people around you that don't respect you for who you are, basically. That kind of stuff is really bad and it's basically bullying. But it also doesn't mean that it is a piece of experience. It doesn't mean that you're fit for a role that's supposed to do a specific tasks. Uh, that's a distinct difference. So I think that's where letters like this kind of miss the point in a way. But like I said, I think this is a troll, but uh, good for like a little bit of side rants. And then it goes into marijuana use and stuff later. Great. <laughs> I bought a cow for $800, so I sold it for $1,000. I bought it again for $1,100. I sold it again for $1,300. How much did I earn? All right, let's check the comments. This is going to be good. $100, because he lost $100 buying it the second time. Well, that's not correct at all. $200 only. $300. Okay, there are two different ways to break this down, and these kind of questions can be confusing, because they're meant to be trick questions. Let's see if I mess it up as well, though comments would have a field day. So there are two ways of doing this. Uh, you can either step through it and just keep tabs on how much money you have left over, or negative money, or you just summarize all the positives and negatives in the whole thing. So the first way of doing this would be to step it through. You have minus 800 after the first step. After the second step, you have plus 200, because you bought it for 800 and sold it for 1,000, so profit of 200. Then you buy something again for 1,100, which means that you spend 1,100, and you had 200 left over from before, which means that now you're minus 900. And then you sell it again for 1,300, and you had a previous negative of minus 900, I think it was, if I get it correctly, so you're plus 400. Uh, the other way of doing it, which is probably less messy, actually, is just that you buy it, which is your negative spendings, which is 800 plus 1,100, which is 1,900, and your selling is your positive, like net uh, gross revenue, essentially, and that is essentially 2,300. So now you have, buy you basically bought stuff for 1,900, you've sold stuff for 2,300. Profit, 400. Uh, that's an easier way of doing it, just putting it as positives and negatives. Because the aspect that it happens to be the same cow doesn't actually affect uh, the final equation. And that's kind of where the trick part comes in. That you try to like ping pong it and that becomes confusing. So that's probably the easiest way to do it. Just put up all the positives and negatives in separate columns and there you go. Me versus he who uncheated me with. Okay. Why? Okay. So this is like... That's the skank. That's, that's the oh uh, yeah, drag her. And then all the comments are like not dis, not agreeing <laughs> with the <laughs> with the first girl. Oh no, bro was saving up coins for the next upgrade. Oh no, traded Corolla for a Benz. I mean, bringing this to TikTok makes me doubt uh, the initial story in the first place. Because oh, that's kind of tacky, isn't it? I don't think I don't know if it's a generational difference, but I don't think I would ever dream of bringing like relationship drama 
onto TikTok of all places. This isn't even, you know, a social media that's limited to people you know. This isn't like back in the 2008 days when people would vent stuff on Facebook to, you know, your closest friends. This is just like really public place full of strangers. Why? What's your name? Sophia. Sophia? What do you do? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, so he's rich. Okay, nice. What do you do? You own it? What do you own? Nobody wants to work anymore. Oh, <laughs> is that what this is heading? The wrong guy. <laughs> I mean, I don't. There's people working. This is a restaurant. <laughs> oh, okay, so business isn't good. No one wants to work. You don't have a job. You <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Oh no! No! no. That is so oh, no. Oh no. Nobody works anymore. <laughs> the irony is absolutely staggering. Oh, I love that. But it's not the same because I'm married to this dude and I don't have to do it, but, but you should have nobody else don't work anymore. <laughs> I think the correction in these instances is nobody wants to work for you anymore. There are always people looking for work, but you have to make sure you're actually offering something that is worth their time and interesting. I think there is, I, I, these people sound like they're somewhat young, so maybe that's not the case, but I have noticed that there is uh, sort of a generational gap when it comes to certain motivating factors. For example, I don't know a single person my age that owns a house, at least not yet, and I'm like 30. And back in my parents' generation, you know, they, they would know people that had been saving up for a few years, that have been working together and that kind of stuff, and it was kind of affordable. So there aren't the same motivating factors. Inflation is killing it. So it's not the same ballpark. So if you don't have the same rewards or same motivations for doing something and pushing really hard, then that's, that's kind of a mo motivational killer for a lot of people. So it, it makes sense. Ladies, have you ever wondered why some men choose Wonder Bread women over you? Wonder and when Bread I say women. Wonder Bread, I'm just talking about girls who are a bit more plain, a bit more oh. basic, average. And okay. you, on the other hand, are like a divine French croissant. Okay, it's basically a shaming like, others. And this is going to be like really Wonder weird Bread standards, isn't it? There are three reasons why this happens, and I'm going to tell you exactly what they are. Ah, yes. Reason number one, Wonder Bread is cheaper, okay? You I get a lot that. more value for basically half the price of a croissant. And even mm -hmm. though some men might appreciate the way you look, they are going to choose Wonder Bread because she doesn't require as much money or time to impress. Or she's just not entitled, I guess. Wonder Bread will change herself for a man. A croissant will not, okay? Wonder Bread will become a grilled cheese, an avocado toast, a PB&J, any day of the week, depending on what he wants. A croissant, on the other hand, it's kind of like take it or leave it. As in, okay. you might not be as willing to compromise or change your lifestyle for a guy. And the third reason is Wonder Bread is less <laughs> maintenance, okay? Wonder Bread, you break it apart, there are no crumbs. With a croissant, okay, so, a so not crumbs, spoiled. <laughs> People that like croissants love croissants and they don't even look at Wonder Bread. So don't try to change yourself, but instead embrace all of your flaky French layers because the right person- Never try to change it. Okay, great. Never try to improve yourself, even even if it turns out that you're alienating people around you. Gotcha, good life tip. I mean, the thing is, especially with the second point, I suppose, you shouldn't have to change yourself fundamentally for a relationship, then it's not the right relationship, and you shouldn't have someone controlling your life like that. It should be a mutual interest, and it should, like, work sort of naturally. But this attitude is also so wild. It's like, you should never have to change yourself. They should spoil you always, and if they choose someone else, it's because they're cheap, and she's cheap, and she's a basic bitch. So just casually shaming other women calling them basic, shaming the men at the same time, and then, and then trying to put yourself up on a pedestal, basically just because you're entitled and don't want to compromise. That's, uh, that's just being immature. I'm just gonna put that out there. Indonesia passes law banning sex outside marriage for both tourists and citizens. Oh, great. Well, I know where I'm not having a vacation. Great. US. A woman was jailed for endangering her fetus. She wasn't even pregnant. <laughs> Ah, you know that the debate is really going downhill, isn't it? Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, nice, we're playing some basketball with snowballs. Look at that. Hey, adapting after the climate. Okay, here's person number two. Come on there, boy, you can do it. You can... No. No, no, it's... No, it's... Just... It doesn't bounce. <laughs> Muscle memory, please. That is so good. This is totally something I would do. <laughs> I think she is completely sober. Look at that. She's not in the right... <laughs> I 
called it. It's not even the right place. Communication is important. I just love the leading up to it, though. Do you have any money? My name is Beth. I mean, it's obviously super loud and you can't really hear anything, but still, that's so funny. So just sitting here casually in a restaurant, that food looks really tasty. I'm getting kind of hungry. And in, right in the background, you can just see a little... Uh, just, uh, just a wholesome family moment, isn't it? A white neighbor called the police and traumatized this nine-year-old black child because he saw her spraying insect repellent on trees. He told the police, say, well, bad woman, and with a honey and spray. If y'all don't leave our children alone, that is... Yeah, wow. Well, yeah, this uh, child is abusing the trees with bug repellent. Better call the cops. You know, God forbid they just go up like, Hey there, kiddo, what are you up to? Even, even if you feel the need to, like, control what they're doing or you think they might be up to something bad, you don't need to call the cops on a nine-year-old. That's... that's pretty ridiculous. My wife got question 13 wrong while buying a gun because she grew up in Texas. She put D. Alright, 13. The use of lethal force may be lawful when defending yourself from which of the following attempted crimes? Disturbing the peace, assault with a deadly weapon, trespassing, all the above. <laughs> so about disturbing the peace. So someone is, like, lawn mowing past 10 in the evening or something like that, whatever, and you just go out and shoot them. <laughs> Great. Great. Does an autopsy hurt? <laughs> Does an autopsy hurt? <laughs> Does the autopsy hurt me? I love the Is shirt that what you're though. Asking, or, or does it hurt the patient? <laughs> that is so good. That's amazing. Uh, it doesn't hurt me. I mean. I'm not injured. Yeah, it's true. You might be injured, and that's why you need the autopsy. But I, I don't think it hurts. I mean, nobody's ever told me. Ow. Ouch! Yeah. Stop! <laughs> that hurts. I think it's uh, pain-free. You don't feel it. That's very good. It's it's one surgery that that you don't want to have, but someday you might need it. Yeah. But it doesn't hurt. No complaints. It's a very painless experience. That's very good. Hell yeah. I would actually put that on my resume if I worked with autopsies. That would be amazing. Zero customer complaints ever. It's glorious. So here's a little picture of a house. They painted the shadow. No, they, <laughs> they painted a shadow from the No, no. I mean, I think you're just really throwing some shade on the paintwork here. <laughs> That's right, emotional support demon. Support their suffering from all the puns. Yes. Elon Musk is gonna put Apple out of business. Did he buy it? <laughs> Schoolgirls told to wear longer skirts to create a good work environment for male staff. If male staff are in any way distracted by children's knees, I don't think they should be allowed anywhere near a school, to be honest. We're really insinuating some really weird things here, aren't we? And at the same time going back to like, Oh my god, they're flashing the ankles. How smacksual. No. This is just weird on like multiple levels. The, hmm. A boy becomes a man when he replaces video games with reading. I do both. Replaces conforming with thinking. Replaces reacting with responding. I mean, I, I do both of my videos, I, I think. Replaces beer with lifting weights. I also do both. Replaces pizza with steak and eggs. I... I definitely do both. Replaces TikTok with meditation. I mean, I do neither. <laughs> Replaces lust with love. I think both are usually a part of a relationship. This is a weird list. <laughs> this is really weird. Awkward Jim bro doesn't know how to talk to women. How's your guys' day going? How old are you? 21, how old are you? 42. <laughs> This is so awkward. What? Um. You're 41. No. 21. I'm 21. Oh, I thought you said you're 41. That's why I said I was 41. <laughs> that was a joke. Oh. oh my god. <laughs> this is really uncomfortable. I feel kind of bad for it, though. Like, obviously, trying to overwork some really anxiety or, or social problems. Like, god damn. But, oh, it's so. Mm. Mm, it's so awkward, but I feel so bad about it. No. Climate activists glued themselves to a runaway in Berlin airport, forcing officials to divert over a dozen flights. I don't, I don't know, is that just a trend that is becoming more trendy nowadays? Like everything from people smashing milk stuff in stores to people gluing themselves in like the most stupid places? I don't know, climate activism is getting a bad 
name because of it. And, and some people have actually told me that it has come out that some of these, or the wackiest climate activism stuff is funded by people who oppose the activism, so they just try to make it look bad. So it's like a big web of just bullshit. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh God. The humans is the only species that wants their baby to die. All other mammals fight so their baby may live. I am pretty sure there are lots of species that, you know, in lack of food, they literally, you know, uh, eat their own babies, for example. That's an evolutionary trait that exists. Why are you lying to me? Oh, no. Are you f***ing me and you're also f***ing her? Oh, you know what I think? Really? We've been talking for the past three months. Are Which you messing up relationships as a prank? Can you explain to both of us? Is this what you're doing? Hi, I'm Stephanie. I'm oh, Anna. God. No, can you explain to me? If I were you and this to happen to me, he was calling me baby the other day. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, does he call you baby no, too? No, no. Hey, Is that no, the only no, word no. that way you call everybody? No, I don't even know you. Seriously? You oh, my God. This is so bad. This is so bad. How do you know me? I know you because we went out. What do you mean, how do I know you? You literally go out and ruin lives for a TikTok? Because that's... I kind of like you and this is offensive. That, that, that's how you choose to spend your days? I would not believe in either. And that's the worst thing. Like, even if it's cleared up afterwards, that's still like a piece of tension that is never going away. Because this random person came up to prank you and you can't fully trust the other person and you can't trust that the other person will trust you in the future, it's just completely ruins the trust for the future, even if the prank is clarified afterwards. This is so nasty. This is so nasty. This is not a prank. This is just being a complete waste of carbon atoms. Garbage people. When you forget one crucial element of straining bone broth. No, 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 no. You don't have anything underneath it. No, no, it's so, oh. No, 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 oh God. It's all just literally down the drain. <laughs> In fact, overpopulation is a myth. In fact, there is so much room on Earth that if everyone lived as densely as New York City, the entire world population of 7.8 billion people could fit into the state of Alaska and give them all an acre of land and everyone could fit nicely. Overpopulation is a lie just like everything else. The lies overpopulated spread to induce fear and scarcity of the masses. And to justify the lower the population statistical fact that blah blah 50% of humans lived in 1% of the land and the fraction of large were turned into gardens, food scarcity would be non-existent. Uh, th there are a couple of things in this that I want to poke at. There are multiple things things to poke at, but one of the things, I don't think there are 8 billion acres in Alaska. I'm pretty sure we've actually looked at this in a previous video, not this specific post, but let's, let's check it out. Acres in Alaska. How many acres does Alaska have? 365 million acres, which is a big place, but it's not 8 billion. You would also think that if this logic applied, it would also apply in, for example, Mother Nature. But you have very few animals, like density-wise, uh, in the wild. And it's because it's not only about physical space, it's about how much the ecosystem can actually support in terms of population. So, uh, and the same goes for humans, I suppose. It's not just about, you know, standing on one square meter of land. Even if you could theoretically squeeze everyone in, it's not like it would actually work or function. These men, six rows away on the train, had the audacity to laugh for an hour. Hearing men in this country laugh was enough to make me cry on the train for 20 minutes. Must be so nice to be able to laugh these days. I seriously never want to hear a man laugh ever again. You know, going through things sucks. And if that is the case, that you feel you can laugh, that is horrible. And you should seek out help from someone who cares. But projecting that in a toxic way and saying no one can laugh because you're miserable, ah, that's pretty nasty. I'm not sure if I agree with that. Okay, Stephanie, now let's get you one with your glasses on so we know what you look like wearing them. There we go. <laughs> Important clarification. Bro, they got Mario Kart in the Super Mario Bros. movie. This goose dang how they had to include woke pride flag nonsense. <laughs> yeah, you know that rainbow ride stuff? Woke nonsense. My parents are taking the news of my career change well. Dad. A hand model for bourbon? Are you insane? It's $100,000 a year. I would like to apologize for my earlier comments. <laughs> I mean, while this is very silly and might be uh, kind of fake, part of the logic does apply. Like, I think any parent would want their kid to do well, but they also want them to have some kind of stable life, you know? So so when you know that it's both, like, oh, they took this passionate job that they love, and it also pays well, heck yeah. But if it's only one of the two, then it kind of misses part of the equation, optimally speaking. Of course, there are ridiculous examples of both sides, but, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a sliver of logic to it, a small one. If the theory of evolution were true, there are millions of these and millions of these, so where are the millions of these? The between species! <laughs> That's a good term, the between species. It's called a 
common ancestor. Okay, and also if you're talking about different like humans, they they kind of wiped each other out quite a while ago, you know? Competition and all that. I am very thankful for my husband. He got a tattoo of my choosing. He knows my father was a problem in my life, so I told him I would divorce him if he didn't get this tattoo for me. Okay? Now everyone will understand why he's with me and what I went through. I'm proud to be a marine wife. I'm in full control of everything. Ura! I love wearing our uniform. Daddy issues. Ah. Oh. Ah, oh, oh, there are so many ahs in this text tonight. Ah, oh, well, good evening, ladies, lads, and lassos. That is it for this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. Remember, emotional support team is out for a limited time only. Get it while it's still here. So, very beautiful. And I will see you in the very next video. Take care. Mwah.